Every now and then a car falls into your lap that you just can't wait to restore. And I've got cars all over the place right now waiting for restorations. But when I got this one, it went right to the head of the pile. You'll see it soon. Don't go away. Hey everybody, it's Paul from Fat Guy Productions, coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And yeah, the car that I'm going to do today just jumped right to the head of the pile. I couldn't wait to do it. Uh, as soon as I got it, I looked it over, I figured out what I need, I got online, I sourced some parts, got them in and started this restoration. Uh, re we'll call it a resto mod because it's not going to be 100% uh, legit out of the box. Um, it's funny because I was in the middle of working on this uh, police cruiser. I thought it would be a nice addition to go next to my uh, fire chief cruiser. Um, and it put the brakes on this project. Um, that and this giant dent in the side that I'm trying to deal with. But anyhow, so it got put to the side. And I started on this new project. And uh, I know you're going to love it. So let's just get right into it and see what we've got for you today. Okay, so I, I really need to try to keep myself in check here and not let my excitement uh, overrun this video, but I am geeked about today's car. Um, it's going to be just a, uh, well, I won't say just a restoration. It's going to be more like a resto mod. Uh, in a, that I'm going to do a couple little things of my own, um, but uh, be that as it may, this is um, just an amazing die-cast car. I'm a huge Tom Daniel fan who designed this for Monogram. It was a Monogram kit for so many years. And uh, that's what this is. It's the school bus. School bus. And let's get to it. This is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have to do a lot of things differently than we're used to. Um, we're not going to be able to take the base off the body because uh, it's, it's pretty much pressed into there and uh, anything I can do is just going to make a problem so that's not going to happen but there is one rivet here in the center and what that's going to do is it's going to release the uh, interior detailing and the uh, suspension board and the wheels uh, from the casting so we're going to drill that out as usual then we're going to open the car up and just pry that off of the the actual base uh, always handling this with care so we don't ruin the hinge point between the body and the real base. So this piece is the motors and where the plastic stuff will go for the driver and all that, um, which obviously is missing. Here is the suspension board and the wheels. Uh, it's all intact, which is a good thing for me. And uh, a fun side note, it's going to have cap wheels. And this is actually the first car on the channel uh, that I'm going to restore that has had capped wheels. So that should be a lot of fun for us. Anyhow, like I said, this uh, base here and the body, uh, they're uh, kind of crimped together back there. And there's no good way to take that apart, and so I'm not going to. I'm going to work around that. So right now, the whole thing is going to go for a swim in my vat of uh, paint stripper, body, base, and all. Commencing warm liquid goo phase. I was going to do my normal bloop, but um, it didn't really bloop. It was too big. So I <laughs> had to jostle it to get it down in there. You know that that but there she is. She's in the stripper. We'll put her aside and let her sit. I didn't know that. Okay, after a little bit of time in the stripper vat, uh, the warm liquid goo phase, uh, you can see the paint just kind of slides right off with just gently rubbing it with this toothbrush so we'll get most of it off before we head over to the sink where we'll give it a wash get rid of the excess paint and stripper and we'll brush it down real good and then we can bring it back and and get uh on to the next step now a, a lot of guys love to remove casting marks and stuff like that i try to leave these kind of the way they came from the factory. So if it's got a, a seam on there or something like that, I generally don't monkey with it uh, unless I have a good reason for it. But I do like to just give them a quick cleanup, even if I'm not using Spectraflame, which I won't be here. 
So all I'm doing is using a wire wheel on my uh, rotary tool and just giving it a once over, kind of clean everything up, make sure there's no residual schemats on the car and that it's going to be ready to go for the paint. Now, as you can see, the casting's actually in really nice shape, especially after uh, you know I get the paint off of it and just give it a quick shine. Uh, this this sucker looks pretty good. You know, it probably would have handled Spectra Flame really nice, but not to be. All right, so it's over to the paint booth where I will begin by giving it a mist of some water, uh, just to help keep dust and things down, and then a real light misting of uh, to me a fine primer. Now you will see I've had to tape the base because I don't want a bunch of paint and primer on it. And like I said, something new, something I have to work around. Uh, but it's going to come out fine. It's not going to be a problem, but there's just no way in the world I had any intention of taking that hinge apart. Okay, so with the primer dry, I can now go ahead and start laying down the yellow color. and. This is not just yellow, okay? If you do that, you're going to have a weird look in the school bus. This is a Tamiya X8 Lemon Yellow, and then I added uh, a few drops of X7 Red to uh, take it a little bit to the orange side of yellow. So, you know, there's, there's just this hue. If you put this up against something that was yellow, you would easily be able to see the difference, but... Here by itself, it's just going to look yellow to you. But trust me, it's the right move. Now, I really want this base paint to come out very uh, nice because I do have some uh, plans for this thing. So uh, I'm going to take my time and um, put it down like this is going to be the, the whole thing right here. Uh, I'll start with my tack coat and then my medium coats and then uh, lay down some nice wet coats. Um, but basically, I want to paint the entire bus properly. I don't want to use decals and stuff for it, except for like the wording and things. So um, I really want this layer to look very nice uh, because I'm going to be building up on top of it. So I really need it to come out good. Okay, so I think it's coming out damn sexy, if I do say so myself. Um, boy, it, it, it looks great, and it's exactly what I'm going to need uh, for this buildup of paint that I'm going to do. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, set that aside and go ahead and clean up my mess over here. Okay, so what's my standing rule? Pull the tape as soon as your airbrush is clean. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and get this tape off of here. Uh, I don't need to paint up inside the uh, body anymore, so I don't need the body flipped down like this. I'm uncomfortable with it being like this, so we're going to get this tape off of here, and uh, then she can sit and dry. Okay, so that's looking really good, and um, the next thing it's going to need is a lot of masking, so uh, it needs to be really, really dry, so we're going to go ahead and set it aside and make sure it's bone dry before we uh, uh, touch it again. So we can take the uh, free time we have and turn our attention to the engines and that interior plate that rivets to the base. And we're going to start just by hitting it up with the, my wire wheel on my rotary tool and, and kind of shining the entire thing up and seeing what we get here. All right, so this is looking really, really good. So we'll just go ahead and put a few last uh, details on it, and then we can go ahead and put it aside and, and keep moving on. Okay, so I let this sit for a couple days. Even though it's a Tamiya paint and it dries pretty fast, um, I wasn't taking any chances, so it's been sitting there. And 
what we're going to do here is we're going to paint the black parts on this bus. Now, the Hot Wheel has black stripes down the side. And um, the reproduction decals that I got came with decals for that, but I wanted my black stripes painted, especially because I plan on going one step further. In the original Tom Daniels, uh, Tom Daniel model, I hate it when I mispronounce it, it's Tom Daniel, not Tom Daniels, but in his original design, the lower half of the front clip is all black as well. And I am going to go ahead and paint that too. Uh, I hope I'm not biting off more than I could chew because masking it off is proving not to be the easiest thing in the world. But uh, we're going to paint the lower half of the front clip and the stripes uh, in Gloss Tamiya X1 Black. And so we've got a lot of masking to do. The, uh, the trick here is use good tape. I'm using Tamiya masking tape. Move slowly, use small pieces of tape, and burnish the edge very, very well with something that won't mar your paint. Like in my case, I'm just using the end of a toothpick. Uh, we want to get a really good seal between that tape. Also, we don't want to leave this tape on for any length of time. So, you need to finish what you started here. If you're going to start laying down this masking tape, you need to tape the whole thing paint it, and get this tape off of here. I went ahead and started by masking the uh, front uh, hood off, uh, leaving the lower part of the front clip exposed for the paint. And uh, there are some little edges that you have to wrap the tape around and some detail work, but it is absolutely doable. So, you know, if, if this is something you want to do, go for it. It can be done. Just like I said, make sure you get everything burnished down. And then when we put the paint down, I'll talk about the proper way to apply your paint uh, to help reduce uh, uh, getting any bleed underneath the tape and things like that. Okay, so, man, am I sorry. I uh, I guess I must have forgotten to push record when I painted the black. But I still want to give you a couple tips here. Um, the first tip is, just before painting, reburnish all your edges, okay? Make sure your tape is stuck down the best it can be. The next tip is, your first several coats need to be very, very fine, okay? What you're looking for is you're looking to be able to seal the edge of the tape in such a way that the paint can't run, all right? So it needs to be fine enough that it can lay down, seal that edge, but not so wet that it can go anywhere, okay? It needs to go where it's gonna go and just stay there. So very light coats, several of them, until you've sealed that edge, then you can start to build up your paint. All right, enough about that. So once again, clean your brush, Get the tape off, okay? We've done all that. We've allowed this to dry for some time, and now we're going to go ahead and put the decals on. Now, I bought this decal set, and I'm ending up going to just use two decals. The word school bus on both sides. Um, the little circle thing for the hood is not a circle. It's kind of an oval. I don't like the cubic inch things for the hood, they don't look right in their white little squares. I probably would have used them if they fit right, but they don't. And uh, I wish the set had come with a, just a plain old black letters for that. I would have put them on the hood, but uh, that's not what it came with. And then the stripes, of course, you realize I've painted, so I'm not going to do that. So let's talk about decals for a second. First of all, okay, get your decal and trim it as close to the printed part as possible. Uh, even though we're going to bury this under clear coat and you'll probably never see it again, you don't want a bunch of extra decal material that you have to fight with. So trim it as close to the decal as possible. Dip it in water, set it aside, and let it, let it soak and, and release from its backing. Then we're going to put a little bit of water on the surface where the decal is going to go. And then holding the decal with a little bit of tweezers, we can use a toothpick to hold the decal down and slide the paper backing out from underneath it. 
and then a toothpick is fantastic for adjusting its position. Now I'm trying very hard here not to touch the decal at all. I'm just trying to absorb excess fluids from around the decal. I'm trying to get all of that off of there very lightly. I'm just using the torn edge of a paper towel and occasionally the tip of a, a cotton swab and just, just blotting that off of there. Very, very gently. Okay, we don't want to move this thing. And here I'm just kind of hoping to smooth it down a little bit. Don't want to touch it. Now I'm going to break out some Solvacet, Walther's Solvacet. Now, this model, the decal is laying on a perfectly flat surface, and I don't really need this here. But by putting it down, it's also going to help it adhere to the model and help it disappear underneath the clear coat. So I'm going to use it anyhow. Uh, Solvacet is a very hot... Um, uh, decal setting solution. You can use uh, Microsol, which is a little milder here. Um, that would work fine, but you know, it's user's choice. But once you put that on there, don't touch the decal. It may start to look wrinkly. Leave it alone. It's the natural process of the chemicals in the decals. All right, with all my decals finally on, we can go ahead and seal everything up. They've been on, they're dry. We're back at the paint booth. As always, we're gonna mist the paint booth down and we're gonna mix up a batch of clear coat from uh, Bright Vision. We're gonna mix it with a little bit of their hardener and we're gonna lay down a beautiful clear coat over the top of everything. And this car is gonna look amazing. So as you can see, I've just quickly this time masked off the bottom. Uh, I didn't do a, a great job on it. I didn't really need to. Uh, all I wanted to do was keep the clear coat off of it real quick because uh, uh, it's. I don't want a high gloss clear coat on this. So uh, just on the body. So we're going ahead and laying it down like we always do, starting with our tack coats, then our medium coats, then our wet coats. And once again, it's all about the lighting. Got to make sure you have good lighting so that you can see the clear coat laying down onto your project. But the first several coats, the the it's actually going to get duller as you put the first several coats on. It's going to look uh, a little more like a flat finish if you're doing it right. But once you start laying down those wet coats, it's going to spring to life. All right, with the clear coat on, we can set that aside to dry and we can remove these caps. Like I said, it's the first time using these for me. And all you have to do, this is so great, you just kind of run an X-Acto knife between the uh, the raised lip of the wheel and the cap. And eventually the knife will slip down into the groove there. And in my case, it just popped right off. But if it doesn't, once you slide in there, just give the knife a little wriggle and it'll pop off. And off it comes. That is so great. That's so awesome. Unless, of course... These pieces are damaged or something like that, then it's not so awesome anymore. Uh, also, uh, the axles become a problem. It's tougher to straighten these things out. And uh, in my case, I can't really clean them well. So I'm just running a file over them to remove any grime and grit and stuff and make sure that they're nice and smooth. Uh, I'm not really trying to file anything here. I'm just really using it more as a way to kind of clean that wire rather than anything else. Also trying to be really careful not to break the uh, suspension board because then I'd really be up the creek. So got to be ca careful with that thing. Having never used caps before doesn't mean I don't have caps. Of course I have a good supply of caps from Bright, Bright Vision. Um, so I'm going to bust out the wheels that I need in the cap version and I'm going to snap them on. Um, it's just it's really fun for me because I hadn't done it before, and it's, it's so cool and so super easy. I, I really kind of dig it. You don't got to worry about screwing up that bearing and all that other stuff. And, and look at this. It just clicks right on there. What a thing of beauty, man. I really dig that. That's pretty cool. Super easy, super fun. 
Okay, so I have my wheels on, and now I can turn my uh, attention to the aftermarket interior pieces. And the the little kit uh, came with both the uh, the interior, which has the molded in roll cage, and the little uh, brace that holds the top the body up when when it's you know popped up. Because this is a funny car, and so the the whole body pivots up and is held up by the, the second piece. Uh, there's a little bit of flash on here, so I'm just cleaning that up. And then you just kind of fold the roll cage around, and it's got little knobs that slide into a couple tabs, and, and there you are, you're in business. You've got a, a new interior, and it just snaps onto that plate with the engines. Uh, same thing for the, uh, the brace that goes to the front. Bend here. Bend here. And then there's like, uh, I don't want to call them knobs. They're like little discs or something like that. And there's a couple little grooves. And then they just kind of slide into those little grooves. Now, the tricky part here is the steering wheel is also molded in here. And you have to kind of fold that up and under, then bring the roll cage down. And that steering wheel sits in a little groove. And you can see when you have big old fat fingers like this, it's a... a Difficult little thing to do. Uh, trying some tweezers that isn't going to help. It's going to be a whole thing. But anyhow, eventually I'm going to get this. Actually, once I get it sealed up, I still have the uh, steering wheel in the wrong place. And I'll have to make an adjustment uh, to it at the end here. But <laughs> uh, trust me, if you fight with it long enough, you'll get it. All right, and here is the piece that goes in the front, and it just clips onto the base and folds, and it's just a prop to hold the body up. But once again, it's got a little flash, so we'll just trim that off, put the little fold in it, and snap it onto the base. Okay, so here we have the, the base part with the engines, and we've got the roll cage and driver's compartment, we've got the brace, and now we're snapping on the air intake and see how it just folds down on there. And uh, we're almost ready to put this uh, bus back together, believe it or not. I'm, I'm super excited at this point. Okay, so start by laying the, uh, the suspension board and the wheels with their new caps on them. Lay that into the uh, base. And now we can take our little engine setup with the uh, driver's compartment and the prop. And then that just kind of lays in there. And then this uh, prop just kind of folds down and out of the way. And so the body can go down. But we're going to leave it up so that we can go ahead and screw this together. And we'll just put a finger over the air intake. There's our one little hole. There's our button screw. It's already been drilled out. We'll put it on the end of our Allen wrench, and we'll just screw this sucker back together. I love it when a plan comes together. All right, so that's just about going to wrap it up for this project. Other than a little bit of a, a detail work on the outside with a little bit of a paintbrush and stuff, and uh, I think we just about got her done. Okay, there you have it. I added a few little details, a uh, couple little red lights in the front, painted the rear uh, bumper silver, um, also painted the uh, drag chutes flat black instead of gloss black, and uh, I think it looks pretty badass, and I'm so glad that I opted to, to paint the stripes and the front clip. I think it really just adds a lot to it, and uh, boy... This is going to be a prize piece in my collection, I can tell you that. I sure hope you enjoyed it. Alright, there you have it, the school bus! Man, I just had a ball with this thing. I love the casting. 
Um, I am a massive Tom Daniel fan. Um, I don't know if you can see it over my shoulder back there. I have an autographed school bus kit from Tom Daniel. Uh, I wanted to be him as a kid, and I would sketch my own designs out of his cars, and then I would mail them to Monogram and hope that someday they would make one of my cars. Uh, clearly nothing came of that. But, uh, I, so, in addition to the fact that it's, it's a Hot Wheel Red Line, and it's really, really cool, and it's a Tom Daniel car, so it just, wow, I, I couldn't be happier with this. This is, this is going to be an all-time favorite of mine, that's for sure. Now, I'll tell you something. Here's a little point of interest. You know, I put the, I, I've been using these little gemstones uh, in a couple of my builds lately. And, you know, I put them on the front markers here. And this just shows where I wish I had a little bit more foresight because on the back there's a series of lights. And I would have loved to have used these back there. But they're kind of rounded like a, a domed surface. And the, the little stones wouldn't stick right or look right. So I opted not to do it. But if I had been thinking when I was doing this car, I could have very easily ground those down, given them a little flat surface, and so that when I painted it and everything, it would have a perfect spot for those little stones to sit. But I didn't think of it, so maybe if you're going to tackle this someday and you want to try that, that's something for you to think about. But I do love the car, and I hope you loved it too. If you loved the video about it, please give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, Click the little bell, you'll be notified anytime I release a new video. If you have any questions or comments, ask them down below. I uh, love to hear from you guys. I love to chit-chat with you and, you know, have a little bit of a banter back and forth. It's always uh, good fun for me. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. This is Paul from Fat Guy Productions. I hope you had a fantastic kind of day where you learned a ton of stuff in school. Until next time, be good.